Well, just out of interest of punctuality, I see we have three members of the commission. Yep. Which means we have a quorum, so yep. there's no reason not to just start on time. Um, let me just, I just realized I need to rearrange my windows a little bit here because I'm still getting used to this setup I have. Okay. So first order of business is, um, I guess, let the uh, minute show that we have Gary, Chuck, and myself present. Oh, and Asher, I'm sorry, Asher, I need to, you are part of this commission as well. Um, and uh, with that out of the way, <laughs> The first order of business is uh, we need to elect a chair and vice chair. Um, I believe, is that, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's what we got to do. So, um, oh goodness, it's been so long since I've done this. I'm forgetting my Robert's Rules of Order. Um, I guess I will formally open the nominations for the position of chair. Um, I nominate and... Rick. <laughs> okay. Yep, is there a second there? Okay, it's uh, been, I guess let the minute show that uh, Rick Fieldhouse has been nominated and that nomination has been seconded. Uh, we're nominated by Chuck, seconded by Gary to uh, take on the role of chair. Are there any other nominations? Going once, twice, hearing nothing. Nominations are closed for the position of chair. So I guess we need to move on to balloting. Um, I guess all in favor of Rick Fieldhouse serving as chair for another year. Please make the sign of uh, affirmative sign, either I or raise your hand. I. 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 Okay. I. I. So it looks like we have a unanimous vote <laughs> that our single candidate ballot is approved, and I am the chair for one more year and uh, let's see so we need a vice chair um, opening nominations for vice chair is uh, there anyone with a nomination for vice chair you want I me will... to do check yeah okay Okay, was that a nomination for Chuck from you, Gary? Oh, I think, does Chuck want to do it or do you want me to do it, Chuck? <laughs> if you'd like it, that's okay. fine. I've been it for a long time. Yeah, I'll, I'll nominate that. Gary. There you go. Okay, so Chuck Zikavus has nominated Gary Linhart, and I will second the nomination for Gary Linhart. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Any others? First warning, second warning, and the nominations are closed, thank you. So um, I guess we move on to voting. Everyone in favor of Gary Linhart for the position of vice chair. Saw three hands up, so that's another four hands, I'm sorry. Looking down at the bottom there, there's one more. Um, and so that is uh, unanimous again for Gary to serve as vice chair. Thanks, Gary. So with that, um, elections are over. <laughs> that was simple. Um, time for public comments. Uh, do we have any public comments? It doesn't uh, look like we have any public. No, no public. No. So, all right. So we have goodness, we have to approve the 
Am I reading this right? October 15th, 2019 meaning minutes? Right. That is correct. We've okay. tried to have meetings during the pandemic. And yeah. this is the first time we've been able to get a quorum since okay. October. Okay. So I guess um, it, hopefully everyone has had a chance to go over the t October 15th, 2019 meeting minutes in the uh, packet. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the minutes as distributed? I move the minutes be approved. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Uh, and with that, I will just declare the minutes as approved. I still um, need a vote, Mr. Chair. Oh, I thought I thought approving minutes was a power of the chairman. Okay, well nope. then, let's go ahead and ballot then. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Okay. So I saw enough to constitute a majority. So the minutes are approved as distributed. Okay. Um, then let's see here. We have our CLG grant inventory of historic sidewalk features. Um, so I guess I will have to defer to staff. Um, I know that we did attempt to have a meeting back in August, which we didn't have a quorum. And uh, so we weren't able to handle some of this business then. Um, what I guess, what do we need to do with this today? Well, so Mr. Chair, so this is more of, a, of an update. Uh, so we met back in August. Uh, as you said, we did not have a quorum for that particular meeting, but those that were present uh, did provide feedback. We sent that information back to the consultant. The consultant did uh, uh, revisions based upon comments that were received. Uh, we had a deadline to get the uh, the proposal submitted to Oregon Parks and Recreation by September 1st. And so we got the revisions back based upon uh, input. We got it submitted. Uh, we got all the documentation that was required to support the study itself. So that was, there were mega files of photos and so forth that got submitted. There were Excel spreadsheets, there was uh, GIS data. And so I got all of that stuff submitted to the State Historic Preservation Office, to SHPO. Uh, they acknowledged receipt of all of that information. And then we submitted our final invoice. And then when I came back from vacation at the end of September, I submitted the final survey work uh, that needed to be done by October 1st to meet the federal fiscal year. Um, so we've got everything submitted and it's done. The study itself is up on the city's website so the public can see it. Um, feedback that I received from the State Historic Preservation Office was it looked like a good work product. Uh, it was very detailed. There's not a lot of communities in Oregon that have actually gone through this process and done inventory of their sidewalks and stamps and horse rings and mail posts and so forth. Uh, I'll get to, I'll share it now. So I was at a conference yesterday on certified local governments and Albany had done something like this. And of course we know Portland had done something as well. Um, the information will get shared with the Oregon Department of Transportation. They were interested in this process. Uh, because we do have sidewalk features along state highways, uh, Main Street, First Street, College Street, and so forth. So that plays into their inventory for their archaeologists and so forth. Because uh, at the conference I was at yesterday, and we'll get into that, um, they're always looking for that kind of data and information because they have requirements through the 106 process. So um, my next step now is to share that with the uh, ODOT archaeologist staff, so they have that information and it will be on record. Um, so it was a good project. The uh, Harris Environmental did a really good job for us in the fact that we were doing all this in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so they were 
closed down for quite a while. They couldn't get in the library. They couldn't get to GFU to get a lot of information. So we kind of got to the crunch at the end um, for them when things started to open up a little bit. And Dana did a good job of trying to get as much information as possible. And then backfill based upon the uh, comments that Rick and Gary provided at the meeting we had in August. So it, that project is now buttoned up and it's all done. So congratulations. Uh, you got another piece of inventory information on Newberg that we've never had before. Well, great. So, so there's really uh, no action that we need to take. I mean, as far as um, approving, because uh, um, it's, it's already been submitted, so we can't really uh, reverse course and make revisions or anything so because that's over it's over and done i've got a um, question doug yes. did they get the information on the gsi g gs gis map i submitted everything that the consultant provided us chuck well has it been entered i guess is it oh i, in, I don't on an, i don't i don't know that all i okay. know is that uh, by September 1st, I submitted all of the information. Uh, Oregon Park and Recs and has gone through staff reductions as well. They've had retirements. They've had uh, budgetary constraints. They've had to uh, reduce their staffing. So I don't know where they're at with, okay. you know, getting all, all that data available out to the public to see. Um, I think they'll get to it as soon as they can. So it's not an in-house project? Uh, no, I mean, all of the data that we received, I gave to our GIS staff. Oh, OK. So there's two places that this information went. So all the digital data, uh, anything that was re related to GIS, went to our engineering department, to our GIS staff. Okay. And they are supposed to create uh, a layer on all the inventory work. They have not done that yet. Okay. That, that same data got submitted to SHPO, which they will then make available to the broader public to be able to access. Um, but I don't believe that they've done that yet as well, just because of staff reductions. Right. Okay. Um, well, are there any further uh, questions for staff or any further discussion on uh, this item. Okay, so um, boy, <laughs> that's about it for our unfinished business. Um, I don't see any new business on the uh, agenda. So unless there is new business from the floor. Well, we do oh, have- Isn't there something on a workshop? Yeah, oh, this, gonna... there. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was blending the two lines together. Um, so the, yeah, the workshop recap then. So uh, yesterday, as a certified local government, Newberg um, participates in the annual training conference that's put on by the State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, so I participated in that yesterday. And there was some interesting information that came out of it. Um, one of the pieces, uh, we saw a presentation on, on Grants Pass and what they did with the, uh, the, cave, the Caveman Bridge going over the Rogue River and the improvements. And this was an ODOT. So we had two ODOT archeologists uh, going through the section 106 process and then what they had to do. And if you ever get to Grants Pass now, there is the, the sign when you're coming out of town going across the bridge mm -hmm. that goes back and replicates where it was back in basically about the 40s or 50s. So it's got the neon on it now. And you know, the sign talks about you're entering in the, into the Redwoods and you're going down to the Golden Gate Bridge and the Redwood Highway. Uh, so that was interesting. So they spent, uh, we spent about, a little, about an hour and a half talking about just the one, Section 106 process and what's all involved. And I think how that plays to Newburgh is that we do have state highways. Uh, so we have Highway 18, at Newburgh Dundee Bypass. We have uh, 99, we have 219 and Highway 240. And so when ODOT 
does the improvements even to the point of even doing a pavement overlay. Uh, there's coordination that is required between them and uh, the local government, and especially since we're a certified local government. And so it gets down to the level of details, you know, where they can place signs, how many signs they can place, you know, what the impacts are. And that whole section 106, I don't know if anybody's been through that before, but you know, looking about what those impacts can be. They may be none, um, they may be minimal, I'm using my words, or that there can be a direct impact. Uh, so that was educational. Uh, I haven't been through one of those trainings in a number of years. The, one of the other topics of conversation was, and this is what we had talked about, is the uh, displaced historic district designation. So you remember back when we uh, had a prior consultant through another CLD grant. And so this came back up as potentially a, an easier way to create an historic district than the traditional method and getting listed on the national register. So you may remember we were talking about context of age, uh, well, basically time periods when certain structures were developed and constructed or not. And so that's something that, again, the commission has talked about, you know, do we want to go down the path of considering doing the analysis for an historic district in the downtown area? Um, this displaced method may be an, another alternative for the commission to consider. And SHPO in the past has indicated that they were willing to uh, participate in one of our commission meetings and kind of further explain that. So that might be something to consider for our February meeting. If staff is available, if that's something you wanted me to do. Um, we've also got a presentation um, about uh, some general context documents. And it's, it's a process and program State Parks is working on and they're looking at projects from the uh, Works Project Administration, as well as part of our African American heritage <laughs> in Oregon. And again, it's another way through this displaced process by the state coming up with this context information and data is being able to take at a local level of community and relate it back to a statewide context that's already in place. Um, so that was, uh, that was relatively interesting as well. The, I'm trying to think here, one of the other topics um, that came up was uh, some work that was done in Le Grand, kind of on a community-wide basis, uh, looking at historic context information. Um, I don't not sure if it's really replicable to Newburgh, uh, but it's something that, you know, we potentially could consider as well. There were uh, some breakout sessions talking about the, um, how do I say this is, there was one on uh, historic preservation districts. There, were, there was one on conservation districts and there's not a lot of conservation districts necessarily in Oregon. Um, but there are a few, there's one in Hillsboro, you know, that was used as an example. But uh, communities were talking about just creating their five-year work plan. Um, and that's something that we have not done. Uh, we've kind of done some of these one-offs, you know, every time we come up for an opportunity for a CLG grant, we start thinking about what it is we want to do. And it may be at the February meeting uh, I can put some information together about different potential projects we want to consider. And then we can maybe start talking about what we want to do for a five-year work program. Um, so that when funding does become available, you know, we can take the highest priority project off the commission's list and, and make an application for that. Uh, I did something similar with our uh, housing, uh, affordable housing program and put together a five-year work program and vetted that through the Affordable Housing Commission and the City Council. So we have some kind of path that we uh, going forward in time, rather than being reactive and kind of ad hoc, uh, what does the commission really want to achieve? So those are some ideas. Um, what might you think about that?
Yeah, I, I, I think that's a great idea that to have uh, try to take a little bit longer scope because we've the past couple of years we've we've gotten some good projects done, but it was always kind of uh, felt like we were um, um, a little unsure of the you know uh, uh, a, a good overall direction um, and trying to kind of tackle things little bites at a time. Uh, this would give us uh, a bit more of uh, um, Oh, what's a good way of putting it? Um, well, just long-term planning, more, you know, looking ahead, thinking what's the overall goal. Um, I'm interested in hearing what the uh, other commission members have to think about this. I think it's a good idea. I think that it would give us more structure and going forward. And uh, we've, We've talked about several things and we've got a kind of a temporary list started, but I think to put it on a schedule and maybe use Doug's uh, five-year plan that he's done already as a template. Yeah, and uh, of course, planning's great. The only other re reactive idea that we talked about in the past that was actually in the minutes that we approved today was uh, talking about uh, possibly signage at the Ewing Young Park um, with the sawmill site. But the minutes just said that we were going to see if that was even um, a category that Kerry Gill and Shippo would even consider. If it's not, then yeah, that would be the last like little reactive project from the past. Yeah, Gary, so I talked with Curry about uh, CLT funds to do signage, and the, re the response was no, funds are not available to do that. Mm -hmm. So to do signage, we'd have to, you know, as part of a five-year work program, is how do we potentially do some fundraising in order to come up with some signage? But those are the kinds of things we want to get on a list for you all to consider about what do you want to accomplish over the next five years knowing that some are going to take some local community effort and financial involvement. Others that will be uh, available through our certified local government grant program. It's uh, Doug from a, like a city bureaucracy point of view, is this still the commission that is the best suited for uh, like fundraising for like Ewing Young signage or is there a different path through the city bureaucracy that makes as much sense? I think it would probably, it, it's twofold, Gary. I think one is it's trying to uh, put a proposal in, in our budget process to see if we can get some allocation. And I think the other is going through the historical society and see if there's some fundraising there. So I look at that as kind of the two prongs. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, we'd have to try to figure out, you know, how much a sign would cost. Um, I think it's probably a good time to note that we're going to a, a biannual budget process. So where we've gone, we traditionally have done a yearly budget process. We're gonna do a two year budget process. So as we move into that here, move, starting in December and into January and so forth, if we're thinking about some funding, I have to put some money in for a CLG grant because it will come up during that two year cycle. Uh, but if we were looking at some signage, you know, you know, how much might a, a sign cost? Does it cost, you know, five thousand dollars? And could I potentially put in the budget that we're looking for twenty five hundred dollars from the city, knowing that the other twenty five hundred comes from community resources? Because uh, being part of the Newburgh Historical Society leadership now. Um, is that something that you would prefer the, like the historical society to actually figure out and actually make contact or contact with a vendor and saying, here's the price tag for such and such uh, signs? Or is that still something that should go through the city if you're talking about city money? 
I would say, it, given the plethora of things that we've got going on, if the Historical Society wanted to take on that task to figure out what an order of magnitude cost would be, and then to let me know uh, within the next 60 days. 60 days, okay. Uh, yeah, roughly 60 days. I'll be, I'll be uh, fully in, engrossed in budget in January. <laughs> Sounds good. That's all I need to know, yeah. And so one of the other things, and so, you know, I don't have the list in front of me tonight, but I got it in the office, is thinking about the ideas that the commission has come up with in the past. And so that'll be something, again, to talk about in February. But uh, one of the things that is uh, traditionally come up is talking about some type of historic district designation in and around the downtown area. So when we were talking about the CLG last time, it was did we want to apply for money to start to do the community outreach and education portion of that with the community, homeowners and businesses and property owners about what a uh, historic district designation means. And that might be, again, a possibility for the next round of CLG funding. Think of it, it's a, it's a multiple, so think about a five-year program. It might be, you know, the next round is to do the community outreach component of that, the education component of that, and start to get the buy-in so people understand the pros and the cons of it. And then the following round would be money um, through the CLG program and potentially through the general fund to actually hire a consultant to do the inventory work. Then your third round would be preparing a national register uh, packet of nomination, just like we did for the Cameo Theater to go through that. So that's one idea. That's like a five-year work program, working through one topic. And then the kind of the auxiliary is what Gary was just talking about, about some of these potential kind of one-off. Well, what about some signage? It's come up in the past about, well, should or could we have signage for all of our National Register uh, sites? And so it's uniform. Again, well, there may be potential to put into the queue to try to get some city money for a portion of that. So where do we come up with the balance of the funds as well? Yeah, my understanding, or at least the, the vision I had in mind was a lot of these little one-offs were, um, while they were standalone, the overall goal was to get a sense that we had enough stuff to uh, justify a, a historic district and also give something to kind of show off to um, business owners, property owners uh, to help with that, that buy-in and education to say, Hey, look at what we have, you know, let's do some show and tell here, get everyone on board. Um, and that was really, you know, I, I, I think we've, done a lot of the groundwork. And so I'm, I'm really uh, enthusiastic about pushing forward for a, uh, you know, in a five-year plan with the end goal being uh, a historic district. And, you know, I, I dug the, the next step being uh, getting people on board um, because it would be really a non-starter if we try to um, you know, start the process and then find out that the majority of our downtown business owners are against the idea because they yep. don't quite understand what the benefits might be. Another topic that came up from the conference yesterday was uh, doing videos. And so there are some communities who have progressed forward now and doing, you know, things with aerial drone, with, with, with UAVs and taking aerial shots of historic structures and putting together information that can be out on a website as another kind of tourist promotion, local community education promotion. And uh, Shippo said that would be eligible for CLG funding mm. as well. So again, so I've kind of got this preliminary list and I need to go back to all the things you've talked about in the last three or four years <laughs> and come up with that big list. Um, but I. I would encourage all of you that we should probably start having that conversation in February. And so we have a path. It also is beneficial to share with the city council about what your desires are 
over the next five years as we go through these two-year budget cycles now. And we may look at it as, well, maybe we call it a six-year plan since we're on a two-year budget cycle. Um, and that is a way to help inform the elected officials about you know, what we're trying to do on addressing historic resources in the community and educating the public and our visitors on those resources that we do have. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a plan. So it gives us gives us a little bit of time to uh, kind of brainstorm before we really start hashing out things in February. So that's all I had, commissioners. Okay, well, let's see. Um, thanks, Doug. I I did get um, while we were still in in the regular order of business, I did get a very helpful suggestion from Sue. Thank you, Sue. Uh, that, and this is, you know, on me that uh, we didn't really introduce ourselves to Asher. He, <laughs> he introduced true. himself to us and we didn't really, uh, I think that he may have just first heard our names when we were nominating and voting. So um, <laughs> sorry about that, Asher. Um, just uh, kind of the, getting back in the swing of things because we've, we've had a hard time getting together and meeting and so we're all a little out of practice. Um, I'll just start off, I guess, since I got the mic. Um, I'm Rick Fieldhouse. Uh, I'm the chair of the commission, obviously, uh, uh, going forward, but I've also been the chair, I guess, boy, I, I, I've only, I've been the only chair since the commission was formed. I just realized I, uh, I am dictator for life, it seems. Um, not sure how I feel about that. Um, and, uh, let's see, I, I've been, uh, not so much recently cause, cause, uh, work has really pulled me away from it, but I've been, uh, in the past really involved with the, uh, city historical society and the county historical society and, uh, promoting Newburgh history. I, uh, grew up in, in Portland just a stone's throw away from Tigard on the other side of that, that boundary line. Um, and, uh, but my family is um, from Newburgh. And so I got deep roots here and, and uh, went to the university and, and uh, uh, have a good, good love for this community. So um, I guess that's where I'm at. Um, so tell you what, uh, rather than making Chuck and, Gary, fight over who goes next. I'll just hand it off to Gary as the incoming vice chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so I also have deep roots here in Newburgh, and I uh, am, I was part of the Newburgh Historical Society with Rick there early on, and I've also been on this commission since its, since its birth, um, and I'm a full-time uh, teacher of history at Veritas High School here in Newburgh. Chuck? That it? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Foos. I've uh, been in Newburgh for about 16 years, but have lived in Beaverton and McMinnville in years past, and most recently in Honolulu. Uh, I have uh, a very strong interest in the history and I've done, because I walk for exercise, I've been over a major part of the city and it uh, piqued an interest in uh, sidewalks when I began seeing marks on the sidewalk for the date of the, they were built and also some of them had the contractor's name and so that that was one of the first things that uh, generated interest. And then finding other oddities in town that uh, Dana, have you, had chance, Asher, have you had a chance to read the uh, report that Dana did that we've just adopted or? Uh, I don't think I've had the pleasure yet. Well, it's on the, on the city website, but that's, uh, Part of what's in there is things that I discovered on some of my walks. Uh, I've been a member of the 
uh, Newburgh Area Historical Society for 14 years, I think, and also uh, a member of the M Hill County Historical Society and my hometown, Talland, Oregon. I'm a member of the Historical Society there. So, uh, and Talent got in the news during the fires because it wiped out about half the town and also Phoenix. So those are, that's where I was raised. And so that was of interest. Um, look at the numbers behind you on your wall and wonder if you're a long distance runner or where those numbers come from. Yeah, so I'm a long distance runner. So I got a, I got a whole bunch of them on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, so while you're walking around town, I'm running around town. Maybe we'll see each other. <laughs> Let's see, I've been on the commission about as long as it's, it's been here too, so. All right. Well, yeah, it, yeah. Checks it since you showed up right on on time. You didn't get a uh, hear uh, Asher shared. I didn't a, hear a Asher's bit. story. Yeah, no. he, he shared a, a bit with us. So, um, well, Asher, would would you mind just saying it, kind of giving it one more time for Chuck? Since uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm Asher. I'm a senior at Newbury High School. I went to Veritas actually, and. Mr. Linhart was my teacher for a, for a year. So uh -huh. I was like, hey, he looks familiar. No, but yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. I run track and cross country. I'm the team captain for both. Um, I was elected all four years for um, student government at Newburgh High School and won all four years. So that was pretty cool. And I've been able to serve my community and serve my school. And it's been one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Um, yeah, um, moved to Newburgh. Native of it, Newburgh? Say again? Are you a na native of Newburgh? Uh, no, so I actually was born and raised in Tigard, but then moved to Newburgh six years ago, six, five years ago, yeah. So I, I do have one more question for Asher. Um, what really motivated you or what was what drew you to um, becoming part of the City Historic Preservation Commission? Yeah, so history has always been my favorite subject um, throughout school. Um, and since I'm a runner and run all throughout Newburgh, I love being able to like run by something and then being able to like can I read something about it or whatever? Um, or like, for an example, um, about a couple months, no, it, was, it was about a month ago, I was doing, I met with one of my youth group leaders and I was in chapters and I was like looking at all the pictures on the wall as walls and I'm like, wow, that is so fascinating. And um, my parents, we have a few like Newberg books or whatever and just like reading about like Ewing Young and all, like I've never even heard of this guy before I moved to Newburgh and it's pretty fascinating how he's not like bigger I don't know I feel like people don't really like still like I tell my friends I'm like you don't understand who this person is like this is <laughs> crazy crazy but all this stuff that's fascinates me so just happy to be here good great well I I hope that um you know, the, these meetings are a good use of your time. I, you know, uh, I know sometimes the formal process of, of government can be a little bit boring and a little bit tedious because um, there are, are rules and, and regulations and laws that we have to abide by. Um, but, you know, it, it, uh, if we strip away all that, it is, uh, uh, hopefully some some good <laughs> good information that uh, is something that you can uh, uh, you know take with you and and uh, when you move on that you'll be richer for the experience um, so I guess with that um, any other I guess questions for Asher or or uh, new... I've got a I've got a question for Doug it's kind of a personal one but uh, what is the history of the bridge in 
Grant Spath? When uh, was it first? It was, uh, it was designed by a gentleman named McCulloch, who designed a bunch of bridges in the 20s, 30s, and 40s in Oregon. So a lot of the bridges on the Oregon coast uh, were designed by him. This one was called a Rainbow Bridge. Um, it was constructed, I believe it was in the 30s, uh, and ODOT needed to come through and make improvements and, and upgrades to that particular bridge, just the traffic volumes that are occurring. Um, they had to address ADA issues because of the way the bridge was designed it was not ADA accessible. And a statewide group was pushing uh, ODOT to ensure through the upgrades and modifications to the bridge uh, that ADA accessibility could be achieved. And they were able to do that. Um, the community, actually they were talking about uh, between the city the police department, the chamber of commerce and various businesses, they all use the bridge as part of their logo uh, for their different organizations and communities. So it's an important feature within Grants Pass. Um, the sign was kind of the, for me, it was kind of the interesting piece was different iterations of the sign over the decades. And at one point, uh, they were not going to do anything with the sign and then community groups stepped up and there were surveys that were done in the community about uh, preserving the sign and restoring it back to a point in time in its heritage. And so they were able to get some um, state funding for that local funding and they were able to restore that sign and there was a company the sign company was out of Eugene and then there were different companies within uh, Southern Oregon that participated and helped fund that restoration as well. I think kind of the moral of the story was talking about this, the section 106 process that ODOT has to go through is the community engagement that also helps drive uh, what those uh, upgrades, modifications and maintenance are going to be for historic resources. And so ODOT used this as one of their examples of a project that was very successful. I was, my personal interest was that I probably went over it in 1941 because my grandmother lived over in Williams Creek and we were in talent and we would go over there on Sundays for Sunday dinner. And I probably went across it in uh, about 1941 at least. That was probably, you know, somewhere around five to 10 years after it was constructed. In fact, in fact, that may be the bridge that when we did, made a trip, we were on gravel roads and we, we always waited for the bridge because it was kind of paved and uh, it was so good to go across a solid surface and then back on the gravel again. So a little bit of history. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Okay. Oh, I, I should mention oh. one other thing. And so GFU was awarded a grant. And so there will be some historic research to be doing. Uh, that grant implementation of that grant got delayed. And I think it'll be the next school year. Um, but there'll be more on that. Uh, the city did uh, provide a support letter to the university for that grant program. Um, and so there'll be more on that as we, we go forward in time. There won't be anything in our current fiscal year on. You got a number of things there, Rick, for your agenda. Well, great. Well, it sounds like uh, next meeting, we'll have uh, some good things to talk about. Um, good to hear things are proceeding, even with all the slowdowns and shutdowns uh, that if, of the past few months. Um, well, with, uh, is there any other new business, uh, that well, needs welcome, to be addressed? Welcome to Azure. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Um, without any further new business, I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Um, our next meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. February 16th, 2021. Thank you, everybody. I'll, I'll make a motion for adjournment just to get it in the minutes. Second. Second. Second.
Oh, that's right. We have to have a motion for adjournment. And uh, and I guess uh, I'll. You can uh, second it, Chair. Sec I can say I'll second to the motion. Yeah, and we don't need a vote. So I I think uh, for adjournment is that correct? That we can just right. adjourn. Okay, so we'll just. Oh goodness, I'm gonna have to read up on my Roberts rules again. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for. Uh, attending this virtual meeting and uh, hope the next one in February goes even better. Um, and maybe we can get Barbara uh, uh, online, at least get her to call in. So thanks again, everybody. Have thanks a great for evening. for your work. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Bye all.